Welcome to Inside Area 9. I'm Kathy Bridgeford and I'm your host today and I'm with the Area 9 in Home and Community Services Agency. Today we're going to be talking about myths of nursing homes and my guest today is actually with Area 9 and is Brian Weaver. Hi Brian. Good morning. Thank you for coming today. Thanks for having me. And you are a fairly new employee of the Area 9 Agency and your title is the Aging, Re Aging Resource <laughs> Aging Disability Resource Center. ADRC Director, ADRC. which is Aging Disability Resource Center Director. Thank you. You should think Big I mouthful. would know. I know it is. I always say ADRC and it's hard to remember what it all stands for. Um, we're going to be talking about nursing home uh, myths today. And before you came to Area 9, you were actually in a nursing facility. So, so you're an expert of this topic. I don't know about an expert, but I've had some experience. Okay. <laughs> well, let's talk about some of the common misconceptions of nursing homes. Sure. I think that, you know, one of the biggest misconceptions about a nursing facility is that, you know, that's, that's where we're going to go to, you know, send you to stay there long term. And, um, you know, in the last decade or so, the, you know, nursing facilities have really stepped up and got in line with our hospitals and our acute care facilities. And, and they provide quite a bit of acute care and rehab services. So, mm -hmm. you know, everybody gets nervous when they hear nursing mm -hmm. facility, you know, mm -hmm. they think that I'm gonna stay there, my family might leave me there. Mm -hmm. But uh, mm -hmm. they really do a lot of rehab to home, you know, and a lot of them will do 20 days, mm -hmm. 30 days, and then you're back home or less. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, people that have, I think, um, like knee replacements, hip replacements, that sort exactly. of thing, sometimes they need to just go and get a little bit of physical therapy. Absolutely. It's a good idea, um, really, and a lot of the local area hospitals promote that to uh, go just for a short term, even if it's for two weeks, just to get strengthening, get your balance, mm -hmm. you know, get everything in order so that you have time when you go home mm -hmm. to be successful. Well, well, even if you have a family member at home taking care of you, they know how to do it from keeping you from injuring yourself. Correct. And and so it is a good thing. And even after heart attacks and things, stints or whatever, I'm not familiar with all the heart issues, but you know, that's a good good thing too to go in and just get a little bit of rehab. It really is because after a heart attack, after a cardiac procedure, you really need to have your diet down. You know, you need to know mm -hmm. the signs to look for. And that can be daunting for family members, you mm -hmm. know, to have to try and monitor that for you. Oh, yeah. So if you can get in and get a little bit of education on that mm -hmm. and uh, learn the proper way to do that and monitor your diet, you'll mm -hmm. just be that far ahead in your recovery. Mm -hmm. And you know, hospitals don't keep you as long as they used to. <laughs> no, they really don't. And you know, for a family member, usually these things happened quickly. It wasn't something they planned weeks in advance or months. And so all of a sudden, they this is, came, you know, at their doorstep, by going to the nursing facility, like you said, they get education. It gives them time to really understand the procedure and what needs to take place in the future. So it is good. But, you know, like you said, so many people, you know, I think the myth from years ago was, well, just put mom in a nursing home and, you know, right. she'll die there. And, you know, it's, right. that's what they believed, you know. But now people come and go in nursing homes. They really do. Um, you know, the other thing about some myths is sometimes people say, oh, they get horrible care in the nursing homes. You right. hear awful stories right. in nursing homes. No, no, it's not always true. It's not true. Um, you know, and every facility is different. Mm -hmm. You know, there are some facilities that do a better job than others, and, you know, we can talk about ways that people can, can research that for themselves. Um, but overall, they do a very good job of working with hospitals and reducing readmissions, keeping people you know, healthy, getting them back home. Um, in the nursing homes that I served, uh, we had more rehab patients at times than we would long-term patients just mm -hmm. because of the turnover, people coming in and going home, mm -hmm. that type of thing. So mm -hmm. they really do a pretty good job. They, you know, their nursing staff is well-trained. Mm -hmm. so. And you know, you sometimes nursing homes will get a bad, a bad name, a bad rap, or you'll hear families saying, oh, you know, my family member was in that nursing home, got horrible care, mm -hmm. went to this one, they got wonderful care. Then you'll talk to somebody else and they were same opposites. Right. You know, oh, they got wonderful care. And it all goes down to sometimes you have one employee. You know, the, the facility might have one employee that, you know, was a problem and that person's gone now. And, you know, so, you know, I, I feel bad a lot of times when you hear those stories. It's like, well, you know. Well, just with everything else in life, perception is reality. Yeah, you know, you're so right. if uh, if the family members there perceive that there's a problem, 
Mm -hmm. then that'll escalate and you know it'll be a bigger problem you know mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it really just depends on personalities and and you know staffing mm -hmm. so but on, on the whole I think that most of the, the facilities in our area that we service do a pretty good job mm -hmm. um, you know the one thing that um, I used to as as a small child going in with your parents to visit somebody in a nursing facility was I remember the smell. Oh, it mm -hmm. smelled so bad. Now, you know, I'm amazed the nursing homes they are clean, they're um they a lot of them have updated their mm -hmm. facilities so they're not so old anymore. I mean, you still have some because, you know, not everybody has the money to right. to do that. But that's another big change I think. It is and, and you're right, you know, when, when I first started working for nursing facilities, you know, I, I kinda had the same remembrance when I went with my grandma to see my grandmother, uh -huh. you know, the smell. Yeah. But, um, they've really done a good job of of you know, keeping them clean. The state regulates nursing homes very tightly. So, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of that's monitored when they come in, you know, the cleanliness of the building and how well it's maintained. And they have started to put a lot more money into nursing facilities because they see a lot more rehab patients, you know, and the baby boomer generation does not, it's not the same as their parents, you know, they, right. they're not going to be as happy with things, you know, that's they right. want the aesthetically pleasing. Oh, yeah. So there's been a lot of money put into that. Yeah. We have a couple of nursing facilities that um, were brand new in, in Richmond um, a few years back. And even the names that they called the, the lunchroom or the restaurant or whatever, I don't know what they were called, but they came up with catchy names, mm -hmm. you know, which to me was more of a, a something the baby boomers would pick up on that name rather than, you know, another generation. And so, so they're working towards that, aren't they? <laughs> they do a good job of, of blending the whole process to make mm -hmm. you feel comfortable from start to finish, you know, mm -hmm. and I think having those special names for things and having special activities just makes it that, you know, that much easier for you to, to make that transition to the nursing facility. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do most nursing facility have activities? They do. Most all nursing facilities have an activities director. Some do a little bit more than others, and that, you know, budget has a lot to do with that, you mm -hmm. know, the corporation, how much money they put into the activities. But uh, certainly all of them have activities, um, and some of them have specialized activities for, say, Alzheimer's and dementia. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just have to do your research. Mm -hmm. Well, there again, that's another positive aspect. You know, if you're at home, sometimes you don't get all those activities that you Absolutely. might as, you know, we just had senior games, we just finished out, and um, which I'm pleased and we finished um, just, you know, recently, and we ended up with almost 250 people in the regular games and 160 or 70 in the nursing facility games. So um, a lot of the nursing homes in our area participated in that day and, and oh, they had so much fun. Yeah, I know from my standpoint, when we would send residents to senior games, they really had a good time. Mm -hmm. It's a nice opportunity for those long-term residents to get out mm -hmm. and, you know, mingle and, you know, mm -hmm. be active. So Well, this year it was in Rushville, so they got to take a road trip all the mm -hmm. way to Rushville, you know, so, so that's nice. Um, what when a person's looking at going into a nursing home what should they should they look at how do they decide that's a good question I, I think it really comes down to you know basic preferences what they really should do is is um, look at the nursing homes that are in your area you can go on medicare.gov um, and they rate all of the nursing homes you know they do state reg the state regulars come in and they and they do a survey and they have a star system, one star to five stars, and you can kind of figure it out from there. Um, sometimes the stars can be misleading. You need to go into the facility, talk to the people. Uh, you can call and schedule a tour with most facilities. Uh, I encourage you just to drop in. Mm -hmm. Drop into a facility that you may be interested in, ask lots of questions, mm -hmm. have them give you a tour. Mm -hmm. So. And check a couple out. Absolutely, probably. you know, check out more than one. You mm -hmm. know, you may have heard of a, of a friend of the family that's gone to this nursing home had a, had uh, you know a good outcome, but I'd I'd take a look at a few just to make sure that you know it's right for you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's that's a good um, that's good for them to think about that because you know what's right for you may not be right for me. So yeah, it's good for to go out personally and and look at that. Um, if if a person wants to go into a nursing home, what do they need to do? Okay, they, they've figured out which one. Mm -hmm. What's the steps they need to take? Well, there, there are a few different steps. M most of the time, uh, I would say 80% percent of the people that go into a nursing facility are coming from the hospital, okay. from a hospital. Okay. So, you know, they'll need to get with their case manager at the hospital. 
um, they'll give them an opportunity to look at different facilities and usually uh, once they pick a few facilities that they may be interested in they'll have a representative that'll come and talk to them and then have the family members take a tour um, and get them involved you know to see which one would be right for them uh, they can you know do research on their own the family members can call around they can take a tour on their own too mm -hmm. if they're coming from home most of the time um, we'll get a call at the nursing facility so usually it's one of those situations where it's an emergent situation person needs to come in fairly quickly and they'll call the nursing home directly mm -hmm. so. okay okay um, what is another um, option than going to the nursing home what, well, what are other options well we do have different options and area 9 is, is the biggest option mm -hmm. you know and I think uh, from my point of view being in the nursing facility uh, in that world, uh, we didn't know a whole lot about Area 9. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to get the word out a little bit more. But mm -hmm. um, Area 9 is the alternative to going into a nursing facility. If your family member doesn't want to go into the nursing facility, is not quite ready for that, uh, we have services that we can provide through mm -hmm. my ADRC, through, through our, our department, and they can stay at home with attendant care, nursing care that will come in to help them. If they qualify, homemaking care, they can have personal lifelines, equipment, all of that could be available. It just depends on where they are financially, where they are medically, you know, do they meet medical needs, do they meet financial needs. Um, so you have a case manager that will go out and assess those needs. And if it's deemed that the person needs too many services, then do they recommend nursing home placement then or assisted living placement? They, they do. If we go out into a home to do an assessment and there is a, a very acute situation, mm -hmm. uh, that person may have been in the hospital recently, was discharged, and is just not doing well. They're decompensating at home. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's an emergent situation, then we will recommend that, you know, they, you know, seek a nursing facility or an assisted living facility, but most of the time we can do a pretty good job of taking care of their needs at home. Mm -hmm. um, our staff that goes in from the different agencies, the, the providers that serve us, do a real good job of taking care of those individuals in their home. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of the things that will definitely keep a person um, not living at home by themselves is food, right. the meals program, which, you know, Area 9, of course, provides a meal. But, you know, even once they get the meal, if they can't take their medications, right. then a lot of times people end up right back in the hospital because they get confused on their medications. And it's not just forgetting to take them. Sometimes they'll find that they've overdosed, right. taken too many of them or whatever. So, right. so there are a lot of needs. And um, so an attendant care worker, do they do medication setups or... They, they will help with medication okay. setups. Um, they'll do, you know, some skilled nursing for us um, they won't do invasive nursing you know mm -hmm. that would need to be done in a skilled facility mm -hmm. but they can't help with and, I, and a lot of the clients that we see in the home need medication preparation that's mm -hmm. that's one of the biggest things mm -hmm. and then uh, help with bathing and dressing and you mm -hmm. know what we call the ADLs mm -hmm. the uh, activities of daily living mm -hmm. uh, those are some of the big things that they need help with mm -hmm. uh, what would you say is um, the average um, yeah, not the average, but for the person in average, I guess, would need. I mean, what, what do they normally need and how often would a provider come into a facility? You know, one, once a week, once yeah. a day, I mean, what? It really depends on, on the need of the client medically, but if you're looking for an average, we, we ask around 10 to 11 questions on one of our screens okay. that involve their ADLs or their okay. activities of daily living. And they need to have at least three needs in that area for them to qualify for our programs in, okay. in home. And usually we'll have somebody come in two hours a day to three hours a day, depending on their need, um, each week, you know, and then mm -hmm. that's paid for through, you know, Medicaid programs and, mm -hmm. and such. But that's, that's about an average homemaking. Okay. We may have come in one hour a day to help with lighthouse work. Okay, okay. So there's a lot of things that those folks can actually do for. Um, you know, I, our respite care program that, that we have, we have volunteers that go out and stay with, with a client. And um, this one client I just happened to know um, had a respite care volunteer going in, and now they're on the Area 9 program. Right. 
And they said it's been such a relief. They said, they, she just didn't know what she did without them before. Because now why the person's there helping dress and bathe and do all those things, she can leave and go to the grocery and come back and doesn't have to worry about it. So she she said, what a relief it's been right. for her, you know, as a, as a caregiver. You know, caregivers are 24 seven. Absolutely. And, you know, I think statistics have even shown that, you know, caregivers end up going down sometimes faster than than the actual client does just because it's such hard work for them. It's so. emotionally and physically draining. I'm glad you brought up respite care because I really think that's an area that, you know, people don't know a whole lot about. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you're a caregiver, uh, you you need a break. Yes, yes, And respite you care can provide that for you, yeah. especially during these summer months. People are going on vacations mm -hmm. and that type of thing. You know, it's okay to take a break. It's, mm -hmm. it's, there's nothing wrong with saying, hey, I need to take a break, and we, we can step in and help you do that. Yeah. Um, holidays are, are the same, you know, mm -hmm. you know, maybe a time when you need a break there. So mm -hmm. just call Area 9, and, and we can try and work that out for you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so many times caregivers, they don't want to contact or ask their children or other family members because they know they're busy, and they just they feel guilty asking them. And, we're here to help. Absolutely. You know? so, yeah. Yeah. Ask us if you if you don't want to ask or you've exhausted your efforts yeah, you know, with, with other family members, mm -hmm. ask us and we can help provide that for you. Now, we don't have an unlimited amount of volunteers, but mm -hmm. you know we can serve needs as, the, as they come. So. Mm -hmm. so a person that was needing services, they would call our office and make a referral. Would that be correct? Or? Yes. If they okay. just call uh, our main number at 966-1795. And just speak to the front desk. They'll they'll send them in the right direction. They'll either send them to the ADRC, and my options folks will set up a time to come out and see them in the home and and do just that. Look at their mm -hmm. options, see what they need based mm -hmm. on their medical needs and their financial needs. Uh, if we if it's not necessarily a medical concern and they and they just need some help, some advice on where to go, uh, we offer a two one one service. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a call in service that you can call straight from your home, or you can call area nine, and we can put you through. And they do a great job of getting you information about other services that that are out there. Mm -hmm. They they are the know all when it comes to everything mm -hmm. else other than you know the medical side. So and they're they're the experts on Medicare as well. So if you have questions about Medicare, Medicare D plans. Mm -hmm. They can help you with that too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a good point because, um, boy, some of that stuff gets confusing. Very confusing. For anybody, no matter what their age right. is, you know, I've looked at those things before, and I'm thinking, oh, Lordy, you know, mm -hmm. what does all this mean? So, um, and you know, the Miller Trust that um, just came about right. what, in June had to be done by June first or something. Right. Um, that was for people in a nursing home, correct? Well, it's for people who have Medicaid. Okay. And have a spin down. Okay. So, you know, if their income exceeds the maximum for the Medicaid allows, then that extra income would have to go into a Miller's Trust. Mm -hmm. uh, and basically, that Miller's Trust is just a holding fund uh, for that extra income, but it's not counted against you, so you can still qualify for Medicaid. Medicaid. And we did have, I think, about 56 people in the surrounding areas that were in nursing homes that that affected. And, um, probably not quite as many in, in the community that we serve that mm -hmm. affected, but uh, we got the information out well in advance on some lawyers that could help them set that up. Mm -hmm. It's really something that needs to be done, you know, with a lawyer mm -hmm. um, to get that set up correctly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that that's that's hard on, on folks, for the caregivers, to figure all that stuff out. And I'm sure the nursing homes probably helped them through a lot of it and, right. and kind of helped them what they needed to do and, and all of that. But, you know, it's just constantly that type of stuff that they're getting. And the nursing homes are good about, about helping the people, i found. Yeah, the business office and most nursing homes mm -hmm. do a very good job of, of uh, meeting the client's need or the patient's need when it comes to Medicaid, Medicare, mm -hmm. commercial insurance, explaining those programs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and they all, most all nursing facilities take all three of those, Medicaid, Medicare, and, and commercial. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're very fortunate in our area because we have what, three or four assisted livings, I think maybe four assisted livings, but we actually have one assisted living besides the nursing homes that are Medicaid, that do take Medicaid. And I know that was a big thing because a few years ago we didn't have any in the area. Right, it, it, it is a big deal, you know, because there are a lot of assisted livings that are, are fee or private pay. Uh -huh. And mm -hmm. that can get pricey for seniors, yeah. you know, and mm -hmm. if you don't have the means to do that but you're not quite ready for a nursing home, 
um, where do you go? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if, if they meet the qualifications for the Medicaid waiver program, then they can go. Mm -hmm. you know, into this assisted living facility. Mm -hmm. So that is a good thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's a couple of nursing facilities in, in Wayne County. I, I think that's it. It's just in Wayne County that is a nursing facility, but they have the assisted living also. So if you go into the assisted living and you need to, you know, you start declining in health, you can actually just move right on into the nursing facilities as well. So and they do a good job of continuum of care, you know, mm -hmm. bringing people in um, when their needs aren't as great but then they're used to the environment, they're comfortable mm -hmm. with the environment and the people, and you know, once their needs become greater, then they can move over to the skilled nursing facility side. And wh when you're looking at a nursing facility, I would make sure that you ask uh, about the bed certification as well. Are they duly certified? Are they Medicare and Medicaid certified? Because mm -hmm. some are and some aren't. Mm -hmm. okay. And that could be important point. on your length of stay. Uh -huh. Good point, good point. Um, we have um, Paul Register at our office. He's an ombudsman, nursing home ombudsman. And so if there's an issue in a nursing home, is the first thing they need to do is contact the nursing facility and then contact um, our ombudsman? Or if there's a concern, do they go directly to our ombudsman? I would certainly, if, uh, if a family member has a problem with a nursing facility, I would contact the nursing facility mm -hmm. first, speak okay. to the administration, you know, get the executive director involved, get the director of nursing involved. You know, if, they're not, if their needs aren't being met through that avenue, then certainly call Paul, you know, mm -hmm. and then um, he'll be willing to step in and, you know, from a state's perspective, you know, make sure that the, that the patient's being taken care of correctly and that the needs are being met for the family. Mm -hmm. He does a and good job of that. He does, and I know he's, he, he always considers the nursing facility, that's their home. Right. You know, that's not a facility, it's their home. And he says they should be treated as if they're living at home. And I, I know several years ago there was um, a facility that didn't offer salt and pepper. Mm -hmm. And he said, if you live at home, you know, don't you use salt and pepper if you're allowed to? Right. I mean, if it's there, you know, as long as your diet, of course, you know, allows for it. And, you know, so he got on a facility, you know, and he says, there needs to be salt and pepper on, you know, right. they, they need to be able to ask. And I, I just thought, Wow, that you know, who would have thought of that? You know, I mean, in a nursing home, you think of are they being cared for? You know, are all their needs being met? But that's something that's very small that he looks after to make sure that they're treated as if they are living there in the home. So, any issue that someone has, yeah, contact Paul. Right? Yeah, it's, yeah, that's a great point. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, contact Paul. He'll he'll look into it. Right. So. Um, now, let's see, how many, how many case managers do you have? I have uh, 10 case managers, okay. um, and they're spread out through Richmond and Connersville, some full-time, some part-time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you have a pretty big staff that is out there willing to, to help. And as far as funding for the agency, um, is there a waiting list? to get into services or how does that work? Well, we have two different programs. We have uh, an A&D or an Aging and Disability Waiver Program mm -hmm. and we have a Choice Program. If you qualify for Medicaid, then we will have you look at the Waiver Program or the A&D Program and they provide uh, a few more services than Choice. If you're not eligible for Medicaid, you have too much income or there are reasons why you don't qualify, then we can still give you services through choice. And when the options counselors, that's your first uh, case manager that'll go out, they will go through all of that with you. They'll look at all of your finances with you. They really do a good job of holding your hand through the whole process and making mm -hmm. sure that you understand exactly what services you're qualified for, and what ser services you're not qualified for. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, do they help with Medicaid, like, okay, say a person's, well, we think we're eligible. Mm -hmm. Do they help them with the Medicaid or do they just um, give them the information so they can get all the material filled out and documents get back to where they're supposed to be? No, they, they absolutely, assist, they help with they Medicaid. We do a Medicaid screening, you okay. know, and, and we will ask all the same questions that if they went down to the Medicaid okay. office, you know, they would get okay. the same, the same uh, questions and we'll help them apply for Medicaid. and and get that process started, which can be daunting, you know, for folks. There's a lot of steps to apply for Medicaid. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. yeah, we certainly help with that. Mm -hmm. There is, and, and you were talking earlier about spend down, and, you know, there's just so many things, new terms that people need to understand that, you know, spend down's not a word that 
probably has been in their vocabulary right. before what does spend down mean, you right. know? And that gets kind of confusing as well. So, um, so some of the other programs that we have, we just talked briefly about, is the meals program. Right. Um, really, a person that is in need of a meal can just call the office and talk about, say, they want they need a meal. Sure. And someone will contact them back, and then we can pretty much provide them a meal, even if they don't need other services. That's correct. Correct. Okay. And a lot of times, we'll find when we go out to do a meal assessment, like you said earlier that there are other issues going yes. on there where they may need just a little bit more care than a meal. Yeah, you know, sometimes people are too proud and they just, yeah. it took them a while to get on the phone to ask for that meal, yeah. but then we find they may need a little bit more. Yeah. And usually, you know, once you talk to them about they're okay, mm -hmm. the, that initial mm -hmm. step of taking it, you know, mm -hmm. they don't necessarily want to do that. Mm -hmm. so. And we'll take referrals from doctors, neighbors, friends, family members. If you have a concern, call our office, right? Really, absolutely. We things are booming right now. There's a lot of need out there. You know, mm -hmm. the population is aging, so mm -hmm. okay. uh, we took in quite a few referrals recently. So great, great. Okay, well, we're about out of time. So um, if you need services, meals, caregivers, respite care, um, you need more in-depth um, care, call our office. 966-1795. Correct. Or if you have a nursing home problem, you can call our office and Paul will take care of that as well. So Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us yeah, today. Thanks for having me. And thank you all for joining us today on Inside Area 9. And we will look forward to seeing you next time. Have a wonderful day.